So, we had looked at the initial value theorem in the previous class. We will continue its counterpart which is the uh, final value theorem. So, if x of n has z transform x of z, then limit cap n tending to infinity of x of cap n is limit z tending to 1, 1 minus z inverse times x of z. So, this is the statement of the final value theorem and we will now prove this. The assumption is we will let x of n to be a right sided sequence. Therefore, x of n is 0 for n less than cap n. So, we will now define a sequence v of n which is nothing but x of n minus x of n minus 1. And once you have v of n defined like this from the properties of the z transform, it is easy to see that v of z is nothing but 1 minus z inverse x of z because this is nothing but x of z minus z inverse times x of z. We can also get the z transform of v of n from first principles. Therefore, v of z is nothing but n going from minus infinity to plus infinity v of n times z to the minus n. So, this in turn is n going from minus infinity to plus infinity. v of n after all is x of n minus x of n minus 1. But x of n is 0 for n less than m. Therefore, you can alter the range of summation to this. And now, let us take limit z tending to 1 of v of z. So, this in turn is limit z tending to 1, v of z after all is n going from cap m to infinity x of n minus x of n minus 1. Now, we will do what comes naturally to us, we will interchange two limiting processes, but then as always we will put a question mark here to remind us that this is not always true, but true only under certain conditions. Therefore, this is n going from cap m to infinity and this is x of n minus x of n minus 1 limit z tending to 1 of z to the minus n. And this simplifies to this because limit z tending to 1, z to the minus n is 1 after all. 
now we can rewrite this as n going from cap m to cap n x of n minus x of n minus 1, but the upper limit really we want it to be infinity, we have replaced it with cap n, therefore we will let limit cap n tending to infinity. So, now we have limit cap n tending to infinity and then we will write out terms of the summation. So, this after all is x of m minus x of cap m minus 1. When n equals m plus 1, this becomes x of m plus 1 minus x of m and so on. And this in turn, when you put the upper limit to be cap n minus 1, this becomes x of cap n minus 1 minus x of cap n minus 2. And for the last index, namely cap n, this becomes x of n minus x of n minus 1. Because the sequence is 0 for n less than cap m, x of m minus 1 is 0 by assumption and this term x of m cancels with this. Similarly, this x of m plus 1 will get cancelled due to the next term and so on. And this x of n minus 1 gets cancelled with this. So, if you look at this based on the pattern that is out here, the only term that will survive within these parentheses is x of cap n. Therefore, this is really limit cap n tending to infinity x of cap n. The left hand side is really v of z, right, because that is what we started off with. We started off with the transform of v of z. Not only that, the left hand side is limit z tending to 1 of v of z. Therefore, this is limit z tending to 1 of v of z, which in turn is limit z tending to 1. v of z is 1 minus z inverse x of z. On the other side, you have limit cap n tending to infinity of x of n. So, this is limit cap n tending to infinity of x of n, this is really x of infinity, which is really the statement of the final value theorem. So, just to make sure you do not uh, get lost in the intermediate steps, some of the things we need to get a feel for. Uh, for example, going from this step to this, what we did was we replaced upper index of infinity with cap n and then let cap n tend to infinity. And the reason you are going through this step, intermediate step of replacing the upper index with cap n and then taking limit cap n tending to infinity is needed because Uh, yeah, say that again. Yeah, so for example, you might think if I expand this out of x of n minus x of n minus 1, if I write this out, you might also think you can cancel adjacent terms. 
correct? If you write this out without going through the step of cap and tangent infinity, you might also want to cancel terms pairwise. And why is it that we are not doing that? You can naively write this term out and then do exactly what we did in this step, right? Okay, so what about x of infinity? Actually, there is this extended real where you can have infinity to the set of real numbers and make it part of the set of numbers. Suppose one argues like that, what would be your answer to that? Now, really, if you um, this cancellation applies only to finite sums. You cannot cancel terms when you have infinite terms in the summation. That is why we need to go through this intermediate steps of being uh, converting this to finite sum, cancelling and then taking the limit. That is all. And uh, as a simple application of this, suppose you have x of n equals u of n. So, this is really the transform of u of n is 1 by 1 minus z inverse and therefore, if you now take limit z tending to 1 of 1 minus z inverse times x of z, x of z is 1 minus z inverse. So, this is limit z tending to 1 of 1 which is 1 and u of infinity is indeed 1 and uh, similar to what was done in the Laplace transform case when you were told about the initial and final value theorem and the final value theorem was illustrated with one example and it was immediately followed by another example. Do you remember what that was? Ah, very good. So, suppose, so this is the counterpart to that. So, if x of n were minus 1 to the n u of n, so this transform is 1 by 1 plus z inverse and then limit z tending to 1 of 1 minus z inverse by 1 plus z inverse which is 1 minus z inverse times x of z, x of z is 1 by 1 plus z inverse and this turns out to be 0. But clearly x of infinity is not equal to 0. Therefore, this is the counterpart to that example. So, what this really means is if the limit exists in both the domains, this theorem will tell you that they are equal. Whereas, for the second example namely, x of n equals minus 1 to the n u of n, the limit really does not exist as little n tends to infinity. Therefore, the sequence does not have a limit in the time domain. Therefore, you cannot hope to get that by using the final value theorem. And the intuition behind that is very similar to what was happening in the Laplace case, there the final value theorem was what? What was the statement of the final value theorem in the Laplace case? Limit s tending to of s times x of s. So, uh, here it is 1 minus z inverse x of z. So, really what is happening there is suppose the sequence had a non-zero limit as n tended to infinity similar to 
the function x of t having a non-zero limit as t tended to infinity there in the uh, continuous time case. Uh, suppose if this had a non-zero limit, what is it in the signal that had to be present for this limit to exist? Yeah, steady state and you have a non-zero limit, what is it that the signal contains? Yeah, we are talking about the time domain, why do you want to bring in pole? Let us go one step at a time. If it were a steady state sinusoid, would it have a final limit? It cannot have a limit if it were a sinusoid, correct? So, it had to have, no, you are looking for a final non-zero value in the time domain as t tends to infinity in the continuous time case. So, what signal must be present, what as one of the components for this to be true? We are talking about the time domain. Ah, it should contain u of t, right? It should contain u of t, right? And the u of t has transformed what? 1 by s, right? So, now you are cancelling the pole at s equal to 0 when you multiply by s. So, that is why you have limit s tending to 0 of s times x of s, all right? Similarly, here, in the discrete time case, if the sequence has to have a non-zero final limit as n tends to infinity, what component must be present in the time domain sequence? K u of n, right? And u of n has transformed 1 by 1 minus z inverse. So, what is it that you are doing here? You are multiplying by 1 minus z inverse and then taking the limit as z tend to infinity 1, right, because that is where the pole is. So, that is all. So, the intuition here is very similar to the intuition that that works or that is present for the final value theorem in the Laplace case, continuous time case. There you needed to have u of t present in the signal and you are extracting that by multiplying the transform by s and then taking the limit as s tending to 0. Here the pole is at z equal to 1 and you are cancelling that by 1 minus z inverse and then taking the limit as z tending to 1, that is all. So, if you understand Laplace very well, you can see the very close similarities between Laplace and z.